All right. I almost skipped. In the past, I've skipped teaching what I taught you guys yesterday and just taught how to solve, how to factor these kind of problems. Because the strategies I'm going to show you for this situation, where again, your A is not one there, okay? Maybe I should just. Okay? The strategies that I'm going to show you for this will work for what we did yesterday, too. Okay? The strategies that we used yesterday. We have to modify them a little bit to use the program. Okay. I'm going to show you two main strategies that I recommend for when it comes to factoring a problem like this. Okay, two main strategies. Okay, one's going to be like what Maya showed us, and one's going to be a modification of what we did yesterday. Okay, so uh, let's just start. We'll actually just kind of kick things off here with an example. Okay, maybe I should put directions here. Factor. So again, when you see that word factor, okay, factoring can mean a lot of different things in different situations. So part of the thing that you have to be able to do in your brain, okay, is to discern what kind of factoring am I supposed to be doing here. So for example, greatest common factor could be an option here. In fact, later in this class, some problems, we'll see some situations where we need to do greatest common factor first and then factor this using like our quadratic strategies, okay, like the product sum and all that stuff. Okay. Is there a greatest common factor for this situation? No, right? There's no number that divides 5, negative 17, and 6, except for 1, which wouldn't really reduce anything. And these both have x's, but this one does not, so there's no GCF there for, for us to worry about. We'll see one in the future, in this class, like later, okay? But not right now. All right? So, let me show you the two different strategies. Strategy 1, I'll show you, is the modified version of yesterday. So, like... Um, Um, product sum, we'll call it. There's not, I mean, this is not the official name, but it's just like from yesterday. Okay, it's like basically what we did from yesterday. <clears throat> okay, but now we also have this new coefficient here of x squared, right? It's got a 5. So in other words, we have to be cognizant that we need to make a 5x squared. So to make the x squared is still easy, right? We just have an x and an x. And then to get a 5, well, the only two nice numbers that multiply and make 5 are what two numbers? 5 and 1, right? So I'm just going to put a 5 there and put the 1 there. It doesn't really matter which one you do because 5 and 1 and 1 and 5 are the same thing. Okay. So let's put the 5 there and the 1 there. Now. I need to look for two numbers here, okay? And these two numbers will have to multiply to make what? This number here and this number here will have to multiply to make? Six, six like before, right? Exactly, because it's gonna be the last, right? These are the last, and those numbers will multiply to make the six. But then I have to be careful. These two numbers are not going to add to make negative 17, okay? But what will, how are we gonna make that negative 17? Well, so again, these two numbers will multiply to make six. This number here on the right will multiply with 5x, and that will combine with this number here, which multiplies with the 1x. So 5 times this number plus 1 times this number will give us that negative 17. So that's what we have to keep an eye out for here, okay? It's not just two numbers that multiply to 6 and two numbers that add to negative 17, right? This number is going to end up multiplying with the 5. This number multiplies with the 1 to create that negative 17. Okay. So you have to be more, a little more careful here. Be a little more careful about how this is going to factor. Okay? So, we can start the same way we did yesterday, though, by picking two numbers that multiply to make 6. So what are two numbers that multiply to make 6? Okay, 3 and 2. All right? So, and let's just use that in that order. So I'll just put a plus 3 in here and a plus 2 in here. Okay? Just like in that order. And let's just check our work here. 5 times 1... 5x times 1x, 5x squared. Okay? 3 times 1 is 3x. 2 times 5 is 10x. So 3 plus 10 is positive 13x. 
I need to be negative 17, so those are not the right numbers we're going to use. Okay. So then we'll keep working here. And I have I can't erase it, but that's what you guys would do, is you would erase and try again, right? This is basically like a guess and check you can almost think. Okay? This is the way I learn how to factor quadratics, is just by guessing and checking. The more you do, the better you get at it. Okay? In fact, there is some strategy involved here. Because for example here, okay, we said a positive three and a positive two, and that is a way to get a positive six. But remember, we need to add to make a negative 17. So if we want to get a negative 17 when we add, should these numbers be positive? No, right? We actually want them to be negative. Okay? So let's make them negative, and let's make this a negative 2 and a negative 3 here instead. Negative 2 times negative 3 will still give us that positive 6. Negative 2 times 1, negative 2. Negative 3 times 5, negative 15. What's negative 2 plus negative 15? Negative 17. So there's our answer. Okay, there it is. Okay. This is how I factor. Okay. I'm not trying to brag. I'm not trying to say it's better or worse. I'm just saying this is how I factor. This is how I was taught. Okay, back when I first learned how to factor, it was like figure all the different combinations and just start guessing and checking until you can figure it out. You know? And I've been doing this for a long time. Okay. Longer than you were born. Yes. <coughs> What about the AC? Okay, we're going to get to that. Yes, yes, yes. So this is one way to do this problem. The other method that takes some of the guesswork out, or at least reduces it back to like a problem we did yesterday, okay, is the AC method, we'll call it. Okay, and just because we need a name to refer to it, and that's one way to do it. So we'll start with the same problem here. Okay. So AC method, you can see here, it involves taking the A and multiplying it with our C. So we'll do A times C, which is going to be um, 30, right? And the beauty of this is we can kind of do that strategy we talked, we're going to use that strategy we talked about yesterday. We're going to look for two numbers. That add to B and multiply to A times C. Okay. So if we do A times C, 5 times the 6, so we get 30, right? Now we have just the, the same situation we had yesterday where we're looking for two numbers that multiply to make 30 and add to make negative 17. Okay? So what are two numbers that multiply to make 30, positive 30, but add to make negative 17? Negative 15, negative 2, exactly right. Okay, so that's what we're going to do. And so in this case, we get, oh, I'm getting ahead of myself here, negative 15, negative 2. Okay, now we're going to take that middle term here and we're going to break it up using those two numbers. So we'll break up B using those two numbers. Okay. So 5x squared uh, minus 15x minus 2x plus 6. Order doesn't matter here. So if you had done minus 2x and then minus 15x, that's OK. Yours will. The intermediate work will be the same, but the final answer will be the sorry. Intermediate work will be different. The final answer will be the same. So, questions so far. I just want to make sure we're all okay up to this point. Everyone okay up to this point? Did I lose anybody yet? Hopefully, this is familiar from the previous time you've learned this. Okay. So again, those two numbers, the negative fifteen, negative two, we broke up that negative seventeen, right? If I were to combine this all back together with like terms, I'd go right back to my original problem. Now. Why break it up? Because now we create this situation like Maya had in the warm up where we can group the first two and group the second two. From this first group, we can factor some stuff out, right? What's in common to these two terms in this first group? What can we divide out of both these terms? Five and an x. Yeah, five and x. OK? 
Okay? If I take a 5x out of 5x squared, what's left? Just a 1x or x. Uh -huh. Take a 5x out of negative 15x, what's left? Negative 3, yeah. Okay, right? Imagine redistributing, right? 5x times x, 5x squared. 5x times minus 3, minus 15x. So we just took that 5x out. What about from this second group here? What can we take out of that? Yeah, I'm going to take out a negative 2. So <coughs> divide out a negative 2. Negative 2x two divided by negative 2, x. 6 divided by negative 2, negative 3. Okay, you know you're on the right track if your leftovers are the same. Right? <coughs> what the leftover parts are the same. And they are. So now we can take those out. Take out an x minus 3 from both. If I take an x minus 3 out of here, I'm left with a 5x. If I take an x minus 3 out of here, I'm left with that minus 2. And hey, look at that. It's the same thing as what we had in the guessing and checking method. And the same thing. So that's the AC method. Okay, you can see the AC method requires a little more work, but the penalty of the more work means you have a little bit easier of a time figuring out your numbers, right? So it's kind of like a, a, a trade-off, right? This can be faster. This can be faster over here, okay? If you you know are strategic with your number selection. This can be slower, but it's maybe a, a little bit easier to guess your numbers and stuff. A little more methodical. So you get to pick whichever one you want to use. Okay? Um, yeah, feel free. I would encourage you to try this. Okay? I know some of you might be like, that's too much. I'm just going to do this every single time. That's your choice. Okay? But I promise you, the more you practice this, the better you'll get at it, and the faster you'll be than doing this every single time. But it's your choice. Okay? Really your choice. And I'm not really hating on either method. They're both fun. I use this all the time. And this is like the, you know, I, I, use, I use both ways. But I typically stick with this. All right. Let's try another one here. Okay. So, in fact, you guys go ahead and try this one. Factor it. Okay. Use whichever method you want there. Use whichever method you want there. So you can use the guess and check, or you can use the AC. Or if you have some mystery third method that I don't know about, I'll be happy to do that. Okay. Pick two numbers that multiply make that. <coughs> What's that? Well, just okay, do what you're doing there. Yeah, okay. So that doesn't work, does it? And then three, and, like, or negative seven and positive three, or positive three and negative seven, you know, any of those work. There's what other, don't forget the easy pair of numbers that multiply make that one. It multiplies at AC, which is third. The A times C. 
So I have a question. Question, yeah. So for your, your, the way you do it, yeah. would it be uh, the next value is whatever multiplied the Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And so you can imagine, Christian, and imagine if that was a three, imagine if that was a six. Then you have to attempt to check two and three and six. Uh, you see what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah. So so in a situation like this where the that mean coefficient is you know prime, you can only do three and one, that's really the way to go. But yeah, once you start getting like six or like twelve, where you can do two and six, three and four, or one and twelve, you see what I'm saying? It gets kind of out of control. But again, the more you practice this, you'll still develop this like intuition where it's like this is not like you should be three and four. And then or I feel like you should be two and six. But anyway. you but yeah. I'm glad you tried the guess chart, you know, the that method there. It'll, it'll develop the more you practice it, you'll do it better. All right, see so, you um, how to get from there? So I knew, so you're trying to do like the, like the kind of guessing check kind of yeah. thing we're doing. So, um, for example, here, I know you get a 3x squared, right? Yeah. In this case. So here, I knew you need to do the 5x squared. How do you make a 5x squared? Well, I need to have a 5x, I need to have a 1x. Right? So we see for here, you would have, what would it be in front? 3x yeah. and then okay. one is exactly right. Okay. And then now you're going to use those, you have the two numbers that multiply like that. Mm -hmm. Right? So those numbers, and this number one plus three, this number one plus one, it should have a positive 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20. So the good news is not that many combinations of multiply like seven. Right? Negative seven. So you really only have a couple options. Okay, so this is close. May I? May I? I'm going to use your pencils. Out of so this is perfect right here. Yeah. Okay. I wouldn't put this in front. Just kidding. Just like this. Okay. You group these two, and I think you saw. Oh, I put three x out of this group. Is that what you're saying? So, so when you do that, may I? so when you take a three x out of this. What's left then will be x and then plus 7 like you have. What can I take out of this group? They're both negative, so I could take out negative 1. And so then comes x plus 7. And we can kind of like know that I want to take a negative out because the left over here should match the left over here that I have. Right? And so then, aha, the same thing, we pull that x plus 7 out and we left over here. <laughs> Does that make some sense now? Yeah. A little more clear? Okay, yeah, yeah. No, no you say, say, don't make it easy. No say, possibly, must be not easy. Okay, there. No, no say is, uh, Okay, so which method do you want to use? The AC? Yeah, okay, nice, you're All right, so first thing we're going to do is do our A times our C. So that's going to be 21. Oh, shoot, we did that. I'm sorry. So then, these two numbers that you pick have to multiply to make negative 21. But this one, this one, okay? Now, the reason these two also have to add to make your you know, turn on the So these are the two So then, Okay, group, then factor like three. Group, then factor like three. Okay, and I think you're all looking to go from there, you think? All right, you know what I mean? So yeah. I would write that down. I think I Yeah, you're both. Okay, I'll have to Okay, so you took a 3x out of this. It should be positive. You took a negative 1 out of this. So the minus 1. X times X plus 7, right? This is a negative 1 X negative 7. So you put negative 1 out, so it's negative yeah, X plus 7. Yeah. So then you take X plus 7 out. You're left with a 3X minus 1. Okay, so here, this is your A. See what I'm saying now? Yeah. Okay. Take it X plus 7 out, then X plus 7. The X minus 1 is left over. So 3X minus 1 times X plus 7. That is That is correct. Okay. So there's A. Yeah. All right, Allie, and then we're going to So, so I'm doing the, the first method, I guess. Yep, yeah, that's great. So I got the 3x and uh -huh. 1 is that, yep. but one. I don't yeah. know yeah. what it is. Because nothing only can multiply to negative 7. 3 is negative 7 and 1. Right. And seven. Right. Right. So, yeah, this is where I think. Be careful where you're putting them, too. Because if you put them in the same place, you're going to get the same thing. Yeah, so I'm going to put them in the same place. Yeah, so I'm going to put them in the same place. Yeah, so I'm going to put them in the same place. Yeah, so I'm going to put them in the same place
So I put a negative seven. Yeah, right. Because if I put a negative seven here, that negative seven multiplies by the positive one. How about the negative seven here? That negative seven multiplies by three. You know, so there's strategies where you put it. I didn't know that. Yeah, that's what I thought. 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 Yeah, that's what I that's why we should get right there. What can you take? It's supposed to add to 20. Because there's two x's. So this should be 21. This one should be 21. Because the two numbers that you pick have to multiply negative 21 and add to 20. So, so these two numbers that you pick right here, right? You, you, you pick these, right? You came up with these. These two numbers should multiply to negative 21, and they should add to 20. So that would make it do that. So really you well. know you're right when these join. Yes, and now you can back something out of there, right? <laughs> okay, so let's see, try some stuff. That's great. Right. No, you actually had it right, right there. You had a plus one minus seven. Negative three. It doesn't even yeah. make sense oh, if you put the three x on the other side. So you got a negative. Because you're just here. so here. Okay. Okay, so I put a positive 7 there and negative 7. What's negative 1 times 7? Yeah. Okay, yeah, I don't know. Hey, look, I know. You're doing multiple things in addition. I don't know. Right? Should be able to say you're right. I know. I was like, you know, I'm going to do it. Quick one. Yeah, go ahead. Are you doing some checking? Yeah. So, you have some x gives you a 3x squared, right? So 2 times 5, 2 times 5. Oh, okay. Should give you, See, right? So uh, just multiply this, and then when you do this one times this one, and add this one and this one, this one and this one, this one, this one, this one, this one you should get that. So 2 times 3 plus 1 times 5 should give you 20. 2 times 5 should give you 7. So this over here should multiply this, and then this two, these two should then multiply to add that. That is the answer. That's it. Yeah, yeah, you're done. That's all you have to do. Just back. That's it. Mm -hmm. All right. Whew. Let's take a look here. There's our answer. Okay. With the AC method right here. Okay, and then just like the guessing and checking, but it's kind of hard to show guessing and checking because you just do it, you know, kind of thing. Okay. You just do it. <coughs> All right. Do we need to see one more? Yeah, yes. Yes, one more? Okay, let's do another one here. <coughs> a simpler one? Well, this one will be on the quiz. Yes, yes, yes. Tomorrow's quiz. Yes, absolutely. All right, let's try another one. <coughs> Gosh, I hope I picked one. Yes, I did. Okay. <coughs> okay. So yeah, if you want to try that one, or does it? You guys, you want to show one, or I mean, I don't know. No. You want to just try another one? Yeah. Okay, try another one. There. Try this one. This will be a try, not an example.
Now, this one's a little more devious than the last one. Okay, if you're going to do the guess and check method, you have two options about how you multiply by 4x squared. Does it matter? Right? Well, it could. Right? Because you can make 4x squared by doing 2x times 2x or by 4x times 1x if you do the guess and check method. Okay? So this is, this is where it can be, you know, that guess and check can be a little more tricky sometimes. But, again, you get, the more you do it, it, it kind of becomes intuitive. And granted, I say that, it's not really fair because I've been doing this for longer than you guys have been alive, so I don't know what to say. But. Okay. But the AC method will also work for you. Okay, fair enough. That's perfect, yeah. Don't mean to get too bad. That's fine. 2x plus 5, which is exactly what you have in the other one. Oh. Right? So you can take a 1 out of that. When there's nothing to take out, take out a 1 of these, and then you'll, you'll be so good to go. So, Matthew. Well, I'm okay over here. Good, good, good. You can all that on these here. Still thinking about it? Nice. Good. All right, Jack, you got it though. Okay. Right, very good. Let's see. No, this is right. So, um, can you divide 10 by 4? No. So, so they both have an x. You can definitely take an x out. But what number can you divide both these numbers by? Just a 2. And then from the second grouping here, there's nothing you can take out of those except for just a 1, right? So it's pull a 1 out. When you're checking, I said 1 times 2x times 2x. Mm-hmm. And then 2x times 5 is 10x. <laughs> well, 5 times 2 is 10. 2 times 1 is 2. 10 and the 2 make oh. 12, right? Because you're going to combine those like terms. Oh, sorry. 2x. That's 1. That is correct. Good job. You can guess the check with the AC. All right. Whatever works. Oh, you're doing all right. You're doing all right. You're doing all right. I was like, what? I know. So I would not call it four here because 10 is not divided by four. The number that you pull out, you want to make sure it divides both of them, both numbers even. So in other words, what's the most we actually pull out number wise? Just do it too. Yeah, that'll help you out. Okay? Yes. Alright, so hang on, hang on, hang on. So, um Okay, so these two numbers you picked, right? The twenty and the one, they don't add to make a twelve. Oh, okay, ten two. So then you want to put a, a ten. 10x and a 2x. So you break it up using those two numbers. You break up that b term using two numbers. So 10x and 2x. Okay. Okay. Yeah. okay. And then from this group, now you factor x. This group, and then you factor out from this group. Okay. So from this group, what can we factor out? What divides 4 and 10? Mm-hmm. And then they also both, this has an x squared, this has an x, so you can take out a 2x there instead. And then, you know, see what you can factor from that group too. And we'll, I'll finish up up here for you so you can see. There's our answer.
okay? If you did the AC method here, okay, 10 and 2 were the two numbers, okay, that you would get, 10 and 2. So you split that middle term 12x up into 10x and 2x, okay? <laughs> from this first group, okay, from this first group, we can take an x out, right, and also 2. 2 would divide both of these evenly, okay, is the biggest number that divides both evenly, and then x as well. You have to check this side over. Here, there's no GCF to take out. So what's the biggest thing that we can take out? A one. So if that helps you, you know, pretend like an aggregate you're factoring a one out. So that gives you that number there. And then you have x plus five as well. So you're the same leftovers now. Pull that two x plus five out, and you're left with the two x plus one. And that's our final answer. That's what we got here from the guessing checking as well. Okay. For those who guess and checked, all right, for those of you guessed and checked, should you have guessed any negative numbers here? No. How do you know? Everything's positive, right? So that makes it easy, right? That's a strategy. Again, that's some strategy you can kind of develop. When you have all positive numbers like this, then you know that everything in here that you guys can check should be positive. So that helps to eliminate all those negative combinations. Okay? Um, similarly, like here, okay, where you have a negative B value but a positive C value, the only way that you can multiply to be positive but add to be negative is if both these numbers are negative. Okay? So again, these two numbers right here, they would have to both be negative in order to multiply and be positive, but then to add and be negative. Okay? So that's another strategy you can use too. When you have a positive, negative, positive, your two numbers you're going to figure out here for the guessing and checking will both have to be negative. And then when it's like this, where it's like positive, negative, or negative, negative, well then it's going to be all sorts of combinations. Okay? So, but there's that. All right. Questions on any of that? You'll have more practice with this for tonight for homework too. Okay, but that's the main idea. Okay, we're gonna move on then real quick. I just want to make sure we're okay with some other stuff <laughs> here as well. So actually, I'm gonna leave this up here. We'll just continue on. Okay. So um, let's take a look at this. Let's factor this one. Nine x squared minus sixty four. Okay. So you can see here the AC method might be a kind of a pain in the butt. Our A is what here? Nine. What's our C? Yeah, negative sixty four. So you're going to, have to do nine times negative sixty four. And then think of the possible combinations that multiply to that number, which, and then add to make zero, right? Because there's no B term that add to make zero. So you could you you could do it that way, okay? You could use your product sum and just figure out you know what combination of numbers would, would match that. That's one way to do it. You could also use guessing and checking here too, okay? But we can also recognize this as a what? This is one of our special forms from yesterday. So, okay. perfect so it's, it's, these are both perfect squares, but there's a subtraction, so we would call it a specifically a difference, difference of squares. Yeah, but it is perfect squares, right? But there's being subtracted with a difference of squares, right? So let's take a look at that. Remember, the difference of squares formula from yesterday was a squared minus b squared equals a minus b times a plus b. Okay, if you remember from yesterday. So what squared gives you 9x squared? Um, 3. three x squared, right, gives you 9x squared. What squared gives you 64? 8. Um, 8, yeah. Okay, so in other words, what is our A in this problem? <laughs> oh, I see what you're saying. Let, uh, the A in, sorry, what does the A correspond to from our difference of squares? What does the A correspond to here? From the difference of squares, A. Yeah, it's the 3 and x. It's 3x, actually. This whole thing right here, that is the a for the difference of squares. And then what's our b correspond to? What does the b here correspond to? Eight. Yeah, the 8. Yeah, this is the 8. Okay. So do we see that? a squared minus b squared, right? a squared minus b squared. Okay. The 9x squared is really the quantity 3x squared. 64 is really 8 squared. So that means our A is 3x. It's the thing that gets squared. Give us this, right? 
8 is our B, because when you square it, you get that 64 here. So then what does this factor to be? It will factor to be A minus B, 3X minus 8, 3X plus 8. Okay, and there are the factors. But again, AC method would still work there. Guessing and checking would still work there. Again, you'd be looking for two numbers, you know, multiply negative 64, and then add to make the zero. So you can still use your normal strategies. They still work, but you can also, because of the difference of squares, you can use that difference of squares you know, formula. Okay, the form. All right, so far so good there. All right, let's do another one here. Is this a difference of perfect squares? No, it isn't. 45 is not a perfect square, and 5 is not a perfect square. x squared is a perfect square, but 5 is not. However, what do both of these terms have in common? Five. A 5, OK? So look for a GCF. OK, factor out a GCF if you can, right? All these previous problems we had, there was no GCF, OK? P.S. That AC method, if you don't factor out the GCF, the AC method kind of like falls apart. So you absolutely have to factor out a GCF first for that AC method. Okay, so keep that in mind. Okay, so we factor out the 5 and, oh, wait a minute, x squared minus 9, what's that? Difference of squares! So we can just make that 5, x minus 3, x plus 3 if you like, right? Or again, you could use the AC method on the x squared minus 9. Or you could use your guess and check, right? This one's nice because the A value of the x squared is just a 1. <coughs> so you need two numbers that multiply to make negative 9, but add to make 0. That's 0 B term. Right? So there it is, minus 3 plus 3. And that's just from yesterday. OK, so make sure you factor GCF first. OK, that's very important. Factor the GCF first. Okay. All right. One more thing, and I'll get you guys started on your assignment. Can't help myself. Okay. You have made a rectangular quilt. <laughs> Why am I hearing groans? That's great. Well done. That is five feet by four feet. <coughs> you want to use ten square feet of fabric to add a border of uniform <coughs> width. Okay. To the quilt. I know that if you had um well some 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 of the other teachers show this I know. <coughs> if Miss Blumen taught you eighteen week algebra then you will have seen a problem like this for sure. What should the width be? Or what should the width of the border be? Okay. So as if these factoring problems weren't hard enough, now I have to throw a stupid word problem at you. You're welcome. You're welcome. Okay, okay, so we've got the quilt. And the quilt is five feet uh, by four feet. 
saved by the phone. Hello? Hi. Oh, yes, 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 that's correct. Yes, thank you for, yes, jogging my memory there. Yes, that's correct. Yep, that sounds good. Mm -hmm, bye. Okay. So, that's the quilt. We're going to add a border of uniform width. We don't know what the actual width of the border is going to be, so we'll just kind of like draw a width, a border around it here. And since we don't know the border's width, we'll just call that our variable x. So from here to here will be x. From here to here will be x. From here to here will be x. And from here to here will be x. Right? So what are the new dimensions of this quilt with the border? So for example, what is this dimension? What's this length? What's this distance going to be now? Or what could I, what's an expression we could use to represent this distance? All right, Matthew, what do you want to say? 2x plus 4. 2x plus 4? Tim, what are you going to say? Yeah, 2x plus 4, right? If from here to here is 4, and we're adding an x this way and this way, that's an x plus 4 plus x, or in other words, 2x plus 4. Okay? What is this going to be? Yeah, an x plus a 5 plus an x, right? So 2x plus 5. Okay, so the area of the entire quilt with the border, 2x plus 5 times 2x plus 4. Question out? No, I didn't know. You sure now? Mm -hmm. Okay. But we're not trying to find the area of the entire quilt. The only thing we know is you want to use 10 square feet of fabric to add a border. That 10 square feet is only the border. It's only the area of this border here. Hmm. This that right here that we did, that gives us that gives this gives us the area of the border plus the quilt. Right? Border plus the quilt. That's the total area of this whole thing is this. What can I do to this to get the area of just the border alone? What should we do? Natalie? Uh, maybe it would subtract so, 20. Subtract y20. Where the 20 come from? Five times four is 20. Right. We're going to subtract off the inner area, this inner rectangle here of the quilt. Okay? So the big area of the whole thing, border and quilt together, 2x plus 5 times 2x plus 4. Subtract off that inner area, 5 times 4. Okay, the 20, and we know that this has to equal then our 10. So there's the setup. Okay. <coughs> How should we go about solving this? So, Natalie, I'm going to get, well, actually, let's go to Jordan. Go ahead, Jordan. Um, Add the, uh, the 20 back to the 10. Okay, so you want to add the 20 over here, make it 30? Yeah. Okay. And so then, what about these two things? What should we do with these two? So we're going to multiply that, okay? Here's why. If I were to just bring these two things down, right, in order to solve a quadratic equation, I need to be equal to 0, right? This is now equal to 30. So we can add that 20 over. That's no problem, but we need to multiply this stuff out. So we'll get 4x squared... Let's see here, 10x plus 8x, so 18x, and then plus 20. Okay, and now what do I need to do? <coughs> Subtract 30, so it's equal to 0, right? Minus 10. Okay, now what should we do next? We're going to factor, right? <coughs> What kind of factoring should I do first, though? So, GCF, right, Maya? What GCF can we factor out here? Two, Two right, okay? So are you gonna, if you were going to jump right into AC method here, whoa, 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 put on the brakes. You've got to pull out a 2 first, GCF, okay? Factor out a GCF. So we'll pull out a 2. It leaves with a 2x squared plus 9x minus 5. 
Now you can factor this using your preferred method. GCF, or sorry, not GCF, uh, AC method or the guess and check. I'm going to do guess and check just for the purposes of uh, time. Okay. So I need that. <coughs> And now we'll set our factors equal to zero. Two will never equal zero, so I don't have to worry about that one. But I can do two x minus one equals zero, and x plus five equals zero. So I get x is one half, or x is negative five. Okay. Do both of these answers make sense in the context? No. Which one do I throw out? The negative five, right? That doesn't make sense as a width of a border. Okay. This one half. This one half is one half. What? What units? Yeah, feet. Which is, in other words, is how many inches? Yeah, so you could also say six inches if you wanted to there. Okay. So again, the devil is in the setup there, right? And then you have to set up the, then you have to solve the factor. And the factor might still be difficult for you, okay? So I understand. It's tricky stuff. Okay. <coughs> We will have factoring on tomorrow's quiz, right? Including the stuff we talked about today. I don't think I'll throw a quilt problem at you like this necessarily, but you should be able to do one of those patio problems that we were talking about, the deck, you know, kind of thing from the warm up. Okay. Just a heads up there. So, your homework, okay, will be starting on page, so 4.4. .4. <coughs> Page 263, this is again in the green book. Okay, and I'll post this PDF online. Um, numbers 6, 9, 13, 15, 22, 25, 34, 37, 41. Ooh, you need to do one of those. Never mind, not 41. And 62. Okay. Sorry, I didn't quite get to a problem I wanted to do yet. Yep. Still have like one or two more people I think that are finishing them up, but then yes, I'll get them back to you. Yes, yes. Any other last minute set requests besides Claire? Michael? Anyone else? Wait. Can we stand up? Yeah. Yes. Okay. Yeah. Yes. Yes. Can you come in? Oh, yeah. You have a question. Oh. Sorry. What's your question? Are you in camera? Okay. I can't say it right now. Yes. So I need to find out this second. Okay? I knew if I get two x squared, there's only one way to do that. One's got to be two x, one's got to be one. Right? So far so good. Also if they get negative five, there's only two ways to do that. Negative one and positive five or positive one negative. Five, right? And so then I just kind of like number some. Um, and I saw that if I put the five here, that would be a positive ten x. And that means I have a minus one x and then two of them. It's not easy, right? So you can also use some methods too if you want to. So, yeah. Yeah. No problem. Do you what? Question? I put you in for set, Megan, already because I figured. Oh, that's fine. If you were to test, I can get it for you right now. Yes. Are you able to stay after school at all? Okay. Um, go ahead. 
Oh, wait, this is a Okay, we can do it. I'm a scrub Sarah. What's that? You calling Sarah? Yes, I'm going to put those in. All right. Yeah. What's the last name again? Thorsell, right? right? Yeah, I got you. T-H-O-R, I'll get it. I'm, I'm good from there. Thorsell, I got it for you. Sorry, I'm going to skip. There you go. You can keep it, but you want to ask questions. I do have one question. Sorry, let me just do this. 